powerful proclamation. The title of the message this morning, appropriately for all of us, is Praying Our Goodbyes. And so John is going to read the scripture from Acts 20, 17 through 38. Good morning. After Paul landed at Miletus, he sent a message to Ephesus, asking the elders of the church to meet him. When they came, he said, You yourselves know how I lived among you the entire time from the first day that I set foot in Asia, serving the Lord with all humility and with tears, enduring the trials that came to me. I did not shrink from doing anything helpful, proclaiming the message to you and teaching you publicly and in your homes. As I testified to both Jews and Greeks about repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus. And now, captive to God's spirit, I am on my way to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there, except that the Holy Spirit testifies to me in every city that imprisonment and persecutions are waiting for me. But I do not count my life of any value to itself, if only I may finish my course and the ministry that I receive from the Lord Jesus, to testify to the good news of God's grace. And now I know that none of you, among whom I have gone about proclaiming the kingdom, will ever see my face again. Therefore, I declare to you the whole purpose of God. Keep watch over yourselves and over all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, that he obtained with the blood of his own son. I know that after I have gone, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Some even from your own group will come, distorting the truth in order to entice the disciples to follow them. Therefore, be alert. And now I commend you to God and to the message of his grace, a message that is able to build you up and to give you the inheritance among all who are sanctified. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down with them all and prayed. They wept and embraced Paul and kissed him, grieving especially of what he'd said, that they would not see him again. Then they brought him to the ship. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks Thanks be be to God. Through many transitions over the years, I've learned, admittedly often the hard way, my mother used to say that was my middle name, learning things the hard way, that before we can enthusiastically enter into something new, we must first learn how to let go, how to say goodbye. When we left Connecticut, oh golly, almost 20 years ago, on our last Sunday at Stanwich Congregational Church, I was in the choir, and so I sang to the congregation, How Can I Say Thanks, as sort of our goodbye song. And 12 years ago, when we said goodbye to our Florida home church down in St. Paul, I sang Eagle's Wings. Most people know that I resist change. I think almost everybody resists change, some with great ferocity. When things are going well, we want it to stay that way, don't we? We want to freeze time for a number of years John and I went on vacation with a number of families, and it was a precious, precious time. And then children grew up, 
we moved on, but you wanted it to almost, you wanted it to still be going on, didn't you? Didn't we? Yeah, that's life. If we live long enough, however, we discover that life is a series of seasons. The change is inevitable. Though I've heard it said that men marry women hoping they'll never change. <laughs> and women marry men intending that they will. Yes. Would you bring up the serenity prayer, Ron? On the cover of your bulletins this morning, you may or may not have noticed that the entirety of the serenity prayer is up there. Say it with me. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking as he did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever and ever in the next. Amen. There is such wisdom in that serenity prayer and our AA friends that meet every single day and many evenings of the week on this campus. They pray those first three lines to accept the things we can't change, to have the courage to change the things we can and the wisdom, dear ones, to know the difference, the godly wisdom to know the difference between what we can and cannot change. Oh, there's enormous peace in that. We need the wisdom to understand that change is part of life and to be able to pray through it, grieve and let go. That's necessary in order to find healing when we're unable to recognize a season for what it is, we can get stuck in our grief and we're unable to receive the new gifts that God would offer us. And in this case of transition, that's Pastor Marianne Piccioni. But even more amazing is our resistance to change when life hurts. You think we'd be more amenable, but often we dig in our heels just as deeply and choose to remain stuck in the pain, whether it be of body, mind, or spirit. We still resist because you know what? Change is moving into the unknown. My mom was a woman with a lot of emotional pain. And after a while, she learned that she was actually and admittedly in emotional pain. But when I came to Christ, of course, what's the first thing you do? You start sharing Christ with your family. And my mother just, she was too scared of the unknown. So she remained in her pain, unable to give it up to Jesus Christ. In our fear of not knowing, we would rather cling to the known than venture into the darkness of the unknown. In our scripture this morning, there is an emphasis, you may or may not have noticed, on the word to know. Paul is reminding the Ephesian Christians about what they know. 
that he has worked tirelessly and sacrificially on their behalf, but more importantly, that they might not only have a head knowledge, but a heart knowledge of Jesus. Paul also tells them that he knows that he will not see them again because he knows that he will encounter trials and tribulations, but he does not know to what extremity. Indeed, the Holy Spirit has been warning Paul again and again through his various travels that hard times await him in Jerusalem. And yet it is the same Spirit that is calling Paul to leave these beloved people whom he knows deeply, has trained up in the faith for three years, and march out into what he knows will be hardship, but does not know to what degree. And it made me think of another man who set his face resolutely towards Jerusalem, knowing of the suffering that awaited him which was Jesus Christ. We have to understand that we don't always understand the ways of God. Here the Holy Spirit was warning Paul and yet was also calling him onward, preparing him for what lay ahead. God tells us that his ways are not our ways which helps us, dear ones, when we don't always understand that we need to let go and let God have our pain and our fears of the unknown to say goodbye. Towards the close of this passage, Paul reminds these Ephesian Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ, as we all are together, why he has done all that he did in the manner that he did it. He says, in everything I did, I showed you. He didn't just talk about it. That by this kind of hard work, we, that is all Christians, must help the weak. Those weak in body, mind, and spirit. Remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Paul had been their shepherd, their pastor. Knowing their need for forgiveness and a restoration that can only be found through the saving power of a crucified and resurrected Lord. Paul had even given his all to them, abundantly and with much self-sacrifice. Paul had modeled himself after his Lord who gave everything, including his life, a life on a cross that we might have life in abundance now and forever. No wonder these Ephesian Christians clung to him, begging him not to leave, therefore putting himself in danger. They loved him. It was going to be so hard to say goodbye, knowing they wouldn't see him again. But notice what happens next. Rather than continue to plead, argue, grumble about Paul's steadfastness in moving on, or even threaten to leave the church, they knelt down together with Paul on the beach and prayed, prayed, prayed their goodbyes. They had accepted the inevitable. Yet they were not stoic. There was no stiff upper lip. They were openly grieving, weeping, Scripture says. 
wrapping their arms around his neck, pouring out their love and gratitude for who he was and what he had done to bring them into the loving, forgiving, restoring arms of Jesus Christ. In the face of grief and unknowing, feeling abandoned, the Christians of Ephesus gave Paul what they could. They prayed their goodbyes as a gift to him. And did you know that when we say goodbye to one another, we are actually giving a blessing? A prayer that God will be with them in their journey as they leave us. The origin of goodbye was from ancient Anglo-Saxon English. It meant, God be with ye. God be with ye. And over the years, it kind of got contracted, conflated into goodbye So when we say goodbye, we are actually saying, God be with thee. Isn't that amazing? A former pastor and president of Howard University, Jeremiah Rankin, wrote the classic farewell hymn, God be with you till we meet again. It was sung on the docks as missionaries prepared to sail off on those great clipper ships to India, China, Africa. Those on board and those standing on the docks knew they might never see one another again on this side of heaven. There was a bittersweet poignancy as they sang these words, and if you know it, sing with me. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsel guide uphold you. With his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. That's what they sang before the ships left the dock. And laying music on to prayer, on to scripture, somehow seems to make it even more powerful. As if we're praying twice. So these ones bidding loved ones goodbye in this manner, they were bestowing a a double blessing. But in God's kingdom, giving is never a one-way street. In return, praying their goodbyes would help them ultimately find closure. We need closure, dear ones. Closure on the beach for the Ephesian Christians for this season of Paul in their lives. Their prayers would remind them that although Paul was being called away, God would provide others to keep their community of faith strong and growing, just as God is providing Mary Ann Peachy Oni to come alongside as your pastor for the next season in this Christ-centered, spirit-guided life of this church. Do I hear an amen? Amen. amen? amen. The saying goes, nothing is certain but death and very good. But I tell you, there is a third. God is a certainty. In the midst of change, God does not change. God is faithful. His promises are true. In Matthew 28, 20, Jesus promised his disciples that he would be with them always that they and we would not be left as orphans, but he would send the Spirit to any who embrace the truth of the good news of Jesus Christ. That he will come again as King of kings, King of all creation, and that we will be part of his kingdom. Would you bring up my... 
poster, please. On our wall in our office, we've had for decades this prayer. Dear Lord, we hope to always have the courage to embrace risk with a what? A glad expectancy of God. You want to know something interesting? I love when God works this way. 36 years ago, today, I gave my life and heart to Jesus Christ on a walk to Emmaus weekend. 36 years ago, this very weekend. And 36 years later, (laughs) I am retiring. I had no idea what God had in store for me 36 years ago. But God knew, didn't he? God knew. And so John and I are also trusting that as we say goodbye to y'all, as they say in the South, we will be led to discover a new church home, And how God intends to use us to bless others in his name. We're trusting in that. Dear ones, in times of change, in seasons of life, we can go to the Father in the name of the Son through the power of the Holy Spirit and pray through our goodbyes. Knowing we will be heard, finding solace for our pain, and the strength to move into the unknown. Knowing that we will not be alone, God will be with us and go before us. Hmm. So I ask each of you here this morning, Are you willing to join me in praying our goodbyes, accepting change as a part of life? Our lives as individuals and the life of this church family. And be willing to embrace risks, stepping out into the unknown together with a glad expectancy of God. So I encourage you, dear ones, and you are so dear to me, to prayerfully let go of your wariness of the unknown, your fears, and step out because, I promise, God will be there to meet you. And all who agreed said together, Amen. Amen.